How the mighty have fallen. That's a phrase that keeps coming up whenever people are talking about Maddox these days. Whenever a discussion pops up about him, or something he's recently done, someone is sure to bring up this gem. From being one of the first online celebrities about 20 years ago, to now barely scraping by while trying to scam his fans for money and suing someone for millions of dollars because he made fun of him on the internet, Maddox has certainly fallen quite far. Now, before we start, I should admit that I don't really know much about Maddox. I don't care about Maddox, and I never really did. My first introduction to him was probably in grade school or middle school, when a friend of mine told me, dude, you have got to check this guy out, he is so funny. And after going to his site and seeing how long his articles are, I promised to myself to come back to this at some point, and never did. For somewhere around a decade, I would occasionally remember that there's this guy called Maddox, who everyone online says is a big deal, and that I, as an internet connoisseur, should probably go ahead and read him. And like an email that you put off responding to, to the point where doing so would be ridiculous, the longer I waited, the more silly I felt about considering reading something because someone told me to do so back when I was 12. I eventually forced myself to do it one lazy afternoon, and I know I'm gonna get crucified for saying this, but I wasn't really impressed. Perhaps this is one of those things that loses their luster without the rose-tinted glasses of nostalgia, and if you don't experience it at a young enough age, you can't join everyone in spending the rest of your life pretending that it was good. Maybe he really isn't funny, but most likely I didn't enjoy his writing because his site was a product of its time. Maybe back when Maddox first created his character in his blog, and was one of the first people to adopt the edgy, self-aggrandizing persona that is now so common online, Maybe at the time he had a virtual monopoly on this shtick. Maybe when people on the internet were still having flame wars and 13 year olds thought that they sounded cooler than someone else on the internet because he wasn't as good as them at stringing together profanities. Maybe back then, Maddox was funny. But when everyone started copying his style and when the online market became saturated with other assholes who also had blogs and some of whom were, unlike Maddox, actually witty and funny, Maddox stopped seeming so special, and as a person who spent years online reading the works of some of these sorts of people before I ever read Maddox, when I finally got around to reading the best page in the universe, I wasn't really blown away. I should also point out that aside from a couple of episodes I checked to confirm that yes, the dick show is good and that the best debate in the universe is bad, I never really listened to Maddox or Dick Masterson's podcasts. I don't like podcasts. I don't listen to podcasts, I don't care about podcasts. Even the one time I did a podcast a couple of times, I didn't really care. What this means is that everything I'm about to tell you is things I'm getting secondhand off someone online. What the kids might call hot goss. And with the frequency with which Maddox keeps embarrassing himself and my absolute refusal to listen to any fucking podcasts, I couldn't be bothered to double check and confirm every single thing I read online by listening to over a thousand hours of these assholes talking to each other to make sure they really said something someone said that they did. So take most of what I'm saying here with a grain of salt. And don't trust me 100% about the chronology of events, because I didn't really make sure 100%. So now, with all of that out of the way, let's start with a brief rundown of who Maddox is, who Dick is, and how they ended up doing a podcast together where Maddox exposed himself as being the king of all cucks. Maddox is the alias of one George Oz... Oz... Ozymandias... Uh, an Armenian college dropout who failed his undergraduate math exam three times before going to work as a programmer at a local phone company in Utah. In 1997, he started a blog called The Best Page in the Universe, under the moniker Maddox, which gradually gained popularity and then lost it when he would neglect to update his blog for years at a time for a project that never really panned out. He stopped updating his blog once to write his one and only successful book, which he has since disavowed, even though there is no reason for him not to work on a book and a blog at the same fucking time. He abandoned his blog again, writing his second book, which failed, and again, thinking he's going to get a TV show, and then pretending that the reason he hasn't updated his blog for two years is because he was working on starting a YouTube channel, which most people can do in an afternoon. And here was George's first big mistake, exposing his sad, balding, flaccid face to the world. 
After years of cultivating an online persona of being a buff, hyper-masculine pirate king, something you can do on a text-based platform, he ruined it all by letting everyone see that he's a balding, haggard-looking man with a whiny voice. S seriously, seriously. Does this look to you like a manly pirate or like a goblin who's also a recovering alcoholic? Does, does this face look like the face of someone who's about to uh, snort coke off the ass of a hooker or demand that you solve his riddle before you're allowed to cross his bridge? Here, here Maddox, let me, let me fix that logo for you. Yeah, that, this, is, this is a lot more accurate. Anyways, the YouTube channel itself was mostly a rehash of things he's already written on his blog and was arguably successful, but not really. One of the first videos he did was him making fun of little kids Something that Bryce Gum has made a fortune doing, so I have a feeling that if this channel was successful, Maddox would still be using it. But what happened to the TV show, you might be asking? Well, this is where Dick comes in. Dick Masterson is the alias of Dax Herrera, a Greek satirist who Maddox met and bonded with probably over both their grandparents being murdered by Kank Uger. Actually, there's some sort of story about them throwing tomatoes at someone at some sort of club, I don't actually know. Anyways, they met, planned to create a TV show about manliness for Spike TV, but this ended up being shelved, reportedly, at least in part, due to George's inability to meet TV execs without acting like an absolute autistic. With the show idea obviously going nowhere, the two of them got together, found some warehouse, and with the help of Dick's audio engineer friend, created the biggest problem in the universe. The biggest problem in the universe was a podcast where both Dick and Maddox would each bring in something they thought was a problem, debate about which problem is worse, and then the problem would be voted on using a site created by Not Maddox. And here is where the problems really started. You see, it's easy to play the overconfident douchebag persona in a written format, where people can't hear you stutter, can't hear your voice, or see that you don't really look the part. But it's much harder to do that when you have to construct your arguments on the fly, with someone constantly poking holes at them, mocking you, and just talking over you. And it's even harder than that, when it becomes obvious to everyone that your stupid asshole persona is no longer just an act. In a contest between two people playing an intentionally overbearing alpha male character, only one could be the winner. And that winner was Dick. Dick was funnier, quicker on his feet, better looking, and overall more dominant than Maddox. Over time, the voting on the show shifted more heavily towards Masterson, and while Dick didn't really give a fuck about this because he rightly understood that this is just a stupid game that they used as a framing device for their show, Maddox seemingly became increasingly jealous over him constantly losing and his show's viewership favoring Dick over him. Well, and I'm won? not just saying that. Who won? We Nobody good won because it's not a contest. It doesn't make sense to say it's okay. a contest. Who got more points than the other person? The most votes got nuclear power. <laughs> Fucking. I asshole. thought I lost. Really? I won with nuclear power. You didn't win. You got more votes. That your pro your solution got more votes. Big deal. Wow. And why shouldn't he be jealous? After all, Dick was funnier didn't look like he was dying of stage 4 leukemia, and actually did something with his life, aside from clinging to his 15 minutes of fame from 20 years ago. And even as an online troll, Dick was better, earning himself a legendary appearance on the Dr. Phil show, while the best Maddox could ever do in terms of television was a brief appearance on a local news show where he looked like a complete autistic. Our next guest is the author of the best page in the universe website, and he's turned his scrutiny of children's artwork in his new book, I'm Better Than Your Kids. We're happy to welcome Maddox to AM Northwest. Nigga, what the fuck is this bullshit? And appearing on the Pan and Teller show, where they tore him a new asshole. The best page in the universe is a website on which Maddox, who is no spring chicken, spouts his predictable angry middle-aged man rants on just about everything. Something he was so mad about, he kept his anger about it pent up inside for six years before finally responding in a video and getting what was left of his fan base to harass Penn and Teller until they offered a half-hearted apology on Twitter for making fun of him on their show about making fun of people. Real manly there, Maddox. You're, you're a, a, a real tough guy. So, as you can see, things weren't really going well for Maddox. Compounding the problem was his new set of beliefs, since Maddox, the guy who used to regularly insult women and call feminists feminazis, has been gradually adopting 
Tumblr's political worldview, leading to episodes in the podcast where Maddox did things like engage in pedophilia apologia, white knight Antifa, and spout the Islam is the religion of peace narrative. He even went back and edited some of the descriptions on his old YouTube videos to apologize for doing things like using the word metrosexual, and made an entire video about Donald Trump and his supporters being Nazis. It's unclear what caused this change. It might be the inevitable fate of someone who became popular back when making fun of George Bush was cool and hasn't figured out that times have changed. It might be the result of living in LA. Or it might have something to do with his psychotic girlfriend, Jessica Bloom. Now, since she's going to be important to our story later, let me just give you a brief rundown of who Jessica Bloom is. Jessica, aka Metal Jess, is an LA model, despite looking like a man, slash actor, slash YouTuber? In any case, she's a giant SJW, completely psychotic, and regularly threatens to call the police on people who make fun of her online. Oh, and she、uh, looks like what she's modeling for is anorexia. On top of that, she also participates in Maddox's asinine schemes that we'll talk about later in this video. Now, there's also either a rumor or just speculation that she and Maddox are in a polyamorous relationship, which basically means that Maddox hits on his female friends but never gets any, and Jessica sleeps around. But this doesn't seem to be based on anything really solid, aside from maybe a.、Uh, How Maddox looks, him admitting that he has a tiny penis, the rumor of him having erectile dysfunction,、um, an entire video he made attacking people for calling him a cuck, defending cuckoldry, the general stereotype of cuckoldry being common in these parts of LA.、Uh, you know, maybe there is something solid behind this. There's there's also a rumor that Jessica has herpes. By the way, this is also something that I don't know if there's any evidence behind, aside from、uh, Maddox flip flopping on the question of whether he would sleep with a girl who has herpes. But regardless of how true or false this rumor is, it has been a perpetual source of hilarity for everyone involved. And so it went on. Dick and Maddox would do a show every week, where Dick would outshine George, laugh at him for the way he talks about sex, which makes him sound like not only has he never had any, but doesn't know what a woman even is. Turn all his points into jokes, and just generally stole the show from Maddox, who thought he was the big star of this garbage heap that they call the podcast. And as a result of both George's increasingly bad attitude, lack of wit, and deranged worldview, the audience gradually shifted themselves to Dick's side. And this seemed like it would just go on forever, but then one day the show just abruptly ended. And here is where the fun really begins. Throughout everything I'm gonna say for the rest of this video, I want everyone to remember that it didn't have to go like this. That if Maddox had just shut his mouth and acted with the same amount of professional courtesy that Dick showed him after their little breakup, or at least acted like an adult. None of this would have to happen. The show would have been split. Each of them would have gone their separate ways. Dick would have his podcast. Maddox would have his podcast. Dick's fans would listen to Dick. Maddox's fans would listen to Maddox. Most of them would probably listen to all of them, and no one would have to know the embarrassing details of what actually caused them to end the show. And Maddox would still maybe have some money and maybe a shred of dignity. So what did Maddox do? Well. Shortly after airing the final episode, where he thanked every single person who worked on the show aside from Dick, the fucking co-host, he started deleting any mention of Dick from any social media related to the show, to the point that he had to be demoted from his own show's subreddit in fear that he would go on a deletion spree there too. Then he went on to delete the entire podcast website, which Dick had to mirror, and redirected the RSS feed to his new shitty show, which might actually be a crime. Concerning the business relationship he had with the show's sponsors, then after being called out on it, he undeleted the website in a more limited capacity and made a video about why the show really ended. Now, bear in mind that at this point, Dick has been nothing but cordial about this, ignoring Maddox's petulant autism and telling people that the show ended over creative differences, and even thanking Maddox for all the good work he's done with him together. The worst thing that Dick had done at that point was admit to people on the podcast subreddit that he and Maddox weren't friends, and that he was only still doing the biggest problem in the universe up until that point for the money and for the sake of the fans. Which,、uh, as I'll explain later, Maddox doesn't really respect and even maybe、uh, actively despises. 
Dick also told people that Maddox has been editing the show to make himself look better and make it seem like he was winning the debates and cut out segments where Dick would make fun of him every time he lost. But that was about it. He didn't call Maddox names, he didn't try to fuck with him in any way, and he didn't tell anyone the insane reason why Maddox actually ended the show. So what was Maddox's video about? Well, it was an absolute disaster. In it, Maddox repeatedly lies about what he did or did not do, whines about Dick making fun of him behind his back, accuses Dick of stealing money from the show by cooking the books, blames Dick for someone posting a rape list thread on an anonymous Dick Show 8chan board which Dick has no control over and which some people suspect might have been posted by Maddox himself, considering it was posted on the less popular of two boards on 8chan about the show and had no replies and it's also unclear how Maddox found something so obscure if he didn't post it himself. There was also another incident where someone posted some of George's personal information on that board and it was deleted pretty quickly which suggests maybe whoever runs that board might know Maddox. That's at least what people are, uh, are speculating, I don't know if it's true. Anyway, Maddox then finishes the video off by playing an out of context clip he edited out of the show where in a discussion which I was made to understand was about whether or not the world is a dangerous place, Maddox gives the example that girls who pass out at a party shouldn't expect to get raped, to which Dick responds that yes, they should, as in, they should expect it because it is a predictable result, considering how awful people are. And Maddox uses this clip to make it seem as if Dick condones rape, and adds that he edited it out of the show because it was incompatible with his values. Finally, as a hilarious little cherry on top, Maddox invented his own little, little hashtag that he hoped to get trending on Twitter called Hashtag Dick Lies. <laughs> Dick Lies. <laughs> as a result of this video, Dick was banned from a comedy improv group which he probably didn't care too much about which was the closest thing to a win that George would get in what would become his perpetual, one-sided war with Dick, where he desperately tries to somehow hurt him and Dick brushes off his attacks by mocking him and laughs as they all backfire in his face. Because let me tell you this, while the worst that happened to Dick, thanks to Maddox's video, was being kicked off an autistic version of Whose Line Is It Anyway, the consequences for George, due to his own video, were much more serious. Overnight, all of George's fans turned their back on him and started asking Maddox what exactly is compatible with his values. Are his old blogs about how all women are shallow and selfish compatible with his values? What about the ones where he calls all women bitches and tells people that they should train them and beat them like dogs? What about the ones where he calls feminists feminazis and tells them to shave their armpits? How about this comic where he draws himself beating a woman and then high-fiving someone over it? Are, are, are any of these compatible with his values? I, I'd love to know. What about some of the non-women related stuff? Like, uh, like encouraging people to beat their kids or kill themselves? Or appearing in this racist little movie? Take off your clothes! Yeah. <laughs> okay, well this usually works for me, okay? It usually doesn't take this long to pop up. Come on, lady, I got a nut! Okay, wait! <laughs> 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 is, is this movie compatible with George's values? D doesn't seem that way. Or is the line drawn at rape? Because you'd think that if you have a problem with rape, it being incompatible with your values, then having a guy co-host your new podcast who wrote a song called I Want to Rape about his own little celebrity rape list would be pretty incompatible with your values. Or, or maybe saying in an interview that your favorite joke is a rape joke. Or maybe, how about this? How about writing an article about an actual 14-year-old girl who was kidnapped and raped repeatedly for several days and then writing in that article that she deserved to get raped? How about being in this picture, standing behind a Kakistani flag, alongside Carl, I wouldn't even rape you Benjamin, and then having both him and all of his little friends that your new SJW buddies call rape apologists come on your show? You would think that any of these things, 
would be incompatible with Maddox's new values. But I guess... I guess they just aren't. But the main thing people asked them, as well as the comedy club that Dick was banned from but somehow Maddox was allowed to stay in, as they downvoted it to Oblivion on Facebook, was, is your book compatible with your values? Considering that in his book, his only successful book, The Alphabet of Manliness, he has not only another chapter where he encourages people to beat women, but gives them instructions on how to sexually assault women and get away with it. Maddox responded to this by first trying to DMCA the picture people were posting of his little rape manual on Imager, and then, when that didn't work, this about his own one and only successful book, saying that he isn't proud of it despite uh, w wearing it on his neck like a fucking necklace. But he even managed to fuck up his own disavowment of the book, because he says in it that he's not disavowing it because of its content, but because of how badly it's written. Meaning he's not sorry he wrote a guide to molesting women, he's just sorry he didn't write it better. Interestingly enough, despite supposedly disavowing his book and all his past unpolitically correct views, I doubt he actually stopped collecting money for the book and its sales. He also still sells t-shirts mocking feminism and joking about beating women and child abuse. Hey, dumbass, you can't disavow something and then also still profit off it. Th that's not how disavowing works, okay? Y you can either do one or the other, th you can't do them together. And what about that money that Dick supposedly stole? Y you know, the, the money that he was uh, stealing from the show that made Maddox end the show completely? Wh wh whatever happened to that? Well, as it turns out, once someone on Reddit actually took a look at the show's financial records, he found out that not only did Dick not steal any money, but it was in fact Maddox who owed Dick something to the tune of five and a half thousand dollars. So what really happened? Why did the biggest problem in the universe really end? Well, at first neither Dick nor anyone else really wanted to talk about it. But over time, more and more people came out with more details about the incident, to the point where we can more or less construct a basic timeline of events. At some point in 2016, Dick and Maddox attended a wedding where Dick got drunk and went home with one of Maddox's old girlfriends, a woman known as 80s Girl, who had broken up with him a full three or four years before that date. Here I should add a little caveat and mention that according to multiple people, Maddox has a really creepy and possessive relationship with all of his female friends and ex-girlfriends, which is something some studies suggest is a common behavior of a psychopath. But back to our story. As Dick and this girl were driving off, George began blowing up her phone with texts asking her if she was with Dick, and when she ignored him, began using the phones of mutual friends of theirs to continue to text her. After the wedding, Maddox confronted Dick and demanded an apology and to be reassured that he didn't sleep with his ex-girlfriend. Trying to spare George's pathetic feelings, Dick lied and told him that nothing happened. Maddox also allegedly called his ex-girlfriend, crying and begging her to confirm that she didn't sleep with Dick in a conversation she put on speakerphone at her job's break room with her co-workers standing around, listening and probably laughing at how pathetic Maddox is. And all of this, after in one episode of the show, Maddox himself went on a rant about how dudes who can't get over their exes are all losers. These guys haven't, haven't gone through the work of self-improvement to figure out what they're doing wrong to be able to attract women, and they're fucking pussies, and they sit there and obsess about their ex who's moved on with their fucking lives. Look, man, you break up with someone or someone breaks up with you, that's the end of it. Look, maybe they like you, maybe they don't, maybe they moved on with someone else, but if you sit there and obsess and stalk and harass and threaten the new person they're living with, you're a fucking pathetic loser. I have dated I have dated girls who did get texts like that. Like uh oh who's this new guy? Blah 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 blah. blah. They're trying to uh you know stalk and threaten and harass and I'm like, "Wow." I just sit back cool as a cucumber. I'm like, "Oh, that guy's uh, sounds like sounds like he's having a rough time." <laughs> yeah, sounds like he's having a real rough time. Yeah. So what would you call that? What the what the guy what does? What this problem is? Yeah, I uh, like the chumpness. Chump That's syndrome. A, chump chump syndrome. That's great. Chump syndrome. That's 
No, I don't know, man. I think these are these are pathetic guys who can't uh, who can't figure their you shit know, out. But a lot of people sit there and obsess, and they stalk, and they they can't get over it. They can't uh, they can't get a pa- get past it. After this, Dick and Maddox's already strained relationship became increasingly more hostile, with them constantly breaking into fights mid show, and Maddox once lying to Dick to make him miss a recording of the show to make him look bad. At the height of this, Maddox invited Dick and their audio engineer Sean confronting him with a two-page long list of perceived grievances that he demanded that Dick answer for. But eventually, someone told Maddox the truth, which is that, unbeknownst to him, Dick had not only slept with his ex-girlfriend, but has been dating her behind his back for over a year, and everyone knew about it besides Maddox. A girlfriend that Maddox is probably still in love with, if Dick's claim is to be believed that he has in his possession a letter that Maddox wrote her begging her to get back together with him. Hearing this, Maddox flips out. He tells Dick that he must either hand the show over to him, or they can just end it. Dick, not being a chump like Maddox and understanding that the show has monetary value, which they both have an equal stake in, tells Maddox to buy him out. Maddox refuses, and the show is set to end. As a final backstab, Maddox then fabricates an excuse to put the show on hiatus for two weeks, and then and I'm not sure if this was done behind Dick's back or not, and I don't care enough to check, invites everyone besides Dick to record a final episode of the show, and gives them a speech about how Dick betrayed him, how he's dead to him, and telling them not to mention his name on the show, and then breaking down in tears. And then, after the show had wrapped, on the very same day, Maddox already coerced people working on the show with him to record the never-aired first episode of his new podcast, which he was going to try to use to replace the biggest problem in the universe. And that was the end of the show, but not the end of our story. Because from then on, what continued was a never-ending revenge effort by Maddox against Dick that gradually destroyed what was left of his set excuse for a career. After deleting the site, hijacking the RSS feed, and giving away the bonus episodes for free without asking Dick, rather than getting money for them which he would have to split with Dick, something that he must be kicking himself over at this point because he has probably no money left, Maddox started a new show called The Biggest Debate in the Universe that no one listens to because it's awful. He then went on behind Dick's back and illegally trademarked The Biggest Problem in the Universe under his name alone, for which I believe Dick is currently suing him then informed everyone willing to listen that he would blacklist him from his show if they dared appear on Dick's. Then he blocked Dick on Twitter. He also, at some later time, reported Dick to Twitter to get him banned. Then he tried to get him banned from Patreon, falsely accusing him of doxing him, despite the fact that in the third episode of his own YouTube show, he dedicates the entire video to doxing some guy. Then he started to spread rumors about him, vaguely hinting at something but never really coming out with any accusations because he doesn't actually have anything to say. Not only did none of this work, but instead of his master plan hurting Dax's revenue or popularity, it instead resulted in George losing not only his fans, who were utterly disgusted and disillusioned by him at this point, and were his only source of income, but resulted in him also losing some of his own co-workers. Congratulations, you played yourself. First, their mutual studio engineer and effectively Maddox's co-host, Sean, finally gave up on him and started working exclusively on The Dick Show, causing the biggest debate in the universe to suffer an immediate and noticeable drop in audio quality. Then, when George demanded that their segment writer, Asterius Kokonos, pick a side between the two of them, Mysterious Chocobos deserted him in Dick's favor something that Maddox responded to by spreading more non-specific rumors about Imperius Autobots, just like he did with Dick, as well as leaking a conversation he probably had with his crazy girlfriend, where he's trying to calm her crazy ass down by telling her that Dick will probably end his podcast as soon as he gets sick of trolling them. And you would think he would learn a lesson from all of this. At some point, you would think he would just stop. You think that watching his friends desert him, his fans leave him, and the resulting way in which his own show loses money which goes right into the pockets of Dick every time he does something like this, would make him realize that maybe, just maybe, he should stop making an ass of himself and just focus on making his awful new show a little bit better. But he didn't. 
Maddox just kept escalating the situation, making ever more desperate and deranged attempts to get back at Herrera for supposedly staying his fame, friends, fans, money, and the girl he's clearly still in love with, never realizing that he lost all of those things completely by himself. At one point, Maddox and his girlfriend Jessica started calling the school where Dick's girlfriend, Maddox's ex, 80s girl, works at, as well as every other school in the district, making up things about her and trying to get her fired. This ended with her having to get a restraining order against mental Jess. A restraining order to the trial of which Maddox showed up, despite being neither the plaintiff nor the defendant, dressed like an idiot and holding a fistful of screen caps of mean tweets that Dick had sent him, as proof that the judge should allow his girlfriend to continue to harass 80s girl. A trial that ended with Jessica losing and reportedly leaving the courthouse in tears. And just a little side note here, it's kind of unbelievable that Mental Jess is actively helping her boyfriend get revenge on the girl he wishes he could cheat on her with. I mean, that is some next level cuckery. Okay, so you would think that this would be peak insanity. You would think that there is no way Maddox can get any crazier than this. But you would be completely wrong. Another hilarious story that showcases just how insane Maddox has become, and probably my personal favorite out of this whole debacle, is the time where Maddox invited an artist who used to work on The Biggest Problem in the Universe to appear on his new podcast. But when he found out that this woman is also going to be a guest on the Dick Show later on, he cancelled her invitation and uninvited her from his house, leaving her stranded in LA with nowhere to sleep. Dick, being the nice guy that he is, offered her a place to stay, which is when she told him that Maddox has been talking to her and told her about his plan to send fake tips to the LA Police Department and tell them that Dick has cocaine in his house. Now, as you might expect, Dick did not take all of this lying down, but you'll soon see that there's a stark contrast between George's raving madness and Dax's hilarious retaliation. Because while Maddox's failed attacks have all been deranged attempts to make Dick lose work or money, Dick's response has been mocking him, pranking him, and generally just fucking with him for fun, which only coincidentally results in Maddox losing work and money. This mostly thanks to how ridiculous both Dick's jokes and George himself make George look, as well as Maddox's stupid ploys continually backfiring in his face. In the past, Dick had bought the domain name for a company that used to sponsor Maddox before it turned out to be a scam and redirected it to his own website. Bought the domain name of Maddox's third book, allegedly causing him to have to change his book's title. A book that, by the way, not only failed miserably, but also promised to be completely new and original, but after two years of writing it, ended up containing nothing but rewrites of decades-old blog posts that Maddox had already written. Dax also helped promote a guy going by the name of Mad Cox, who was a parody of Maddox, which ended up making more money on Patreon than Maddox himself. Dax and Delirious Kokoros also bought ads targeted at Maddox's fans on Facebook, mocking him and advertising the dick show. Then, there's the crown jewel of all these pranks. The time Maddox tried to game the system on iTunes by uploading a cut-up version of a bonus episode of his podcast as a comedy album and then bragging that he's number 4 on the iTunes chart, neglecting to mention which chart he's actually on and that the comedy album chart has... Like, no one, no one downloads these albums ever. And despite this, Maddox still managed to rank lower than a 5 and 7 year old album by Daniel Tosh and Dane Cook respectively. Seeing this, Bobo Bo 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 Bo's decided to prove a point and record an entire album in 24 hours containing nothing but Christmas songs about Maddox being a cuck. And not only did this album reach number 1 on iTunes, it actually ended up listing on the Billboard charts and the Dick Show had to provide an archival copy to it, meaning that the Library of Congress now contains a copy of an album called Cuckmas Carols, entirely comprised of nothing but songs about Maddox being a cuck. But it doesn't end there, because then Matt Cox also recorded a comedy album making fun of Maddox, and then that too whisked past Maddox's fake album all the way to the number one spot. Now, I mentioned earlier that Maddox has no respect for his fans, 
and since I don't know where else to shoehorn this segment of the video, and since this little shit show also ends with a sort of interesting prank, I guess I'll just uh, tell the story here. So not long after the two separated, a guy who used to make music for their show made an honest attempt to reconcile the two by creating a website on behalf of their shared fanbase that intended to collect signatures from fans to pressure the two into burying the hatchet. And while neither of them took this too positively, Maddox, in a private conversation with this guy, snapped at him and hurled abuse at him, telling him that he owes his fans nothing and that they should be grateful to him. Disgusted by this, the guy shared this conversation on an IRC channel where one of the people working on the dick show happened to accidentally be at that time. Maddox's immediate response to these conversations being leaked was to contact this guy again called Waterboy and threaten to dox him if he didn't lie and say that he faked the logs. A threat which this guy of course screen capped and also leaked. And what did Dick and, uh, look, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna call him by his actual name from now on, okay? I, I'm, I'm out of jokes, okay? So what did Dick and superfluous chromosomes do? Created more targeted ads about this and had them show up on George's own subreddit. Finally, all of this nonsense culminated into the most ridiculous move by George, assuming he hasn't done something to top this between the time I'm recording this and the time I finally finish editing it which at the rate things are going, he very well might have. He filed a lawsuit against Dick. Now, some people say that this lawsuit is for 20 million dollars, but that's wrong, that's not true, okay? That's, that's, that, those are just rumors. It's actually for 332 million dollars. That's right, and if you're watching this video near the time I uploaded, assuming I don't take too long to edit it, this is probably the drama you're most interested in hearing about. And while I'll get to it soon and tell you in more detail what Maddox's court summon contains and just how delusional this lawsuit is, allow me to cock tease you for just a little bit longer. Because before we can get to that, let's take a moment to talk about Maddox's network and the people working on it. The Madcast is the name of Maddox's fledgling podcast network that he launched almost immediately after ending the biggest problem in the universe. In a fever chase to somehow develop his long-dead internet fame and whatever goodwill is left over from his work with Dick into a thriving business franchise he hoped would provide a paycheck for him for the rest of his days. The network quickly became synonymous with shady business practices and god-awful content. Which is a shame for Maddox because he allegedly sunk $30,000 redos into this thing when everyone who knew him begged him not to do it and told him that a WordPress site would do just fine. On this network, he often engages in less than wholesome business dealings. Alongside things I've already mentioned like the jacking of the RSS feed, the mislabeling of content when uploading it to YouTube to get a higher rating, Maddox also partnered himself with some shady individuals like a man purse kickstarter scam, Kendall and Hyde, that ended up with its creators taking all the donation money and running away with it. Creators that some people speculate may actually be more connected to Maddox than we know because they're apparently from the same city as him? I don't actually know if this is true or if this is just a coincidence, this is just something I've seen people say. Another one of George's uh, questionable sponsors was the Candid app. Now, if you don't know about this, then I envy you, but I suggest you look up videos on the topic made by Heartful Opinions, or read the Encyclopedia Dramatica article. The videos themselves have been mostly deleted, but copies exist, and I think it's linked on the article. But if you don't want to do that, let me just give you the gist here, okay? The short version of this was that some people with a history of running some questionable online businesses started a free speech platform and paid various YouTuber skeptics to uh, promote it, which they did even after it became a high for child molesters and after it became clear that it was a scam meant to use their fanbase as practice targets for a censorship bot that they later sold to Google. They continued working with this company even after its own CEO tried to personally dox people who were criticizing it and then paid the YouTube skeptics even more money 
to make attack videos about people criticizing their own horrible fucking ethics when talking about this company. And Maddox? Maddox was right there in the trenches with these people, getting paid to promote this horrible fucking scam. By the way, remember that name, Candid, because I'll mention it again a bit later. One final scam connected directly to Maddox was something called Mad Bucks, an incomprehensible token system used on a site to purchase bonus content which no one could figure out how it works or why it existed. Speculations as to why Maddox would implement something so moronic range from the stupid, such as the previous system being devised by one of the people who left him to work with Dick and therefore being tainted forever by him, to the completely sleazy, like maybe it was an attempt to get people to pay in advance for content as some sort of rebate scam in case he never produces it, or maybe it's like a carnival that sells you tickets to go on rides in packs of 10, but every ride costs 3 tickets meaning that you'll have to buy an amount that duplicates by 30 for you to get your full money's worth. Oh, and he also tried to sell sauce at one point. And I'm going to be doing a hot sauce review right now on this. This is Maddox Hot Sauce and Chest Hair Tonic. Oh, excuse me, Professor Maddox. It smells like cayenne peppers, cardboard, printing paper, and some kind of like ink. Ugh. Oh god. Oh. Oh. Oh my god. <laughs> it's mostly vinegar just like I thought, but not like just like I'd rather probably just sip vinegar out of a bottle. It tastes how paper smells, fresh printing paper, just kind of gross. That is probably one of the worst tasting sauces I've ever had in my life. And that's I've had a lot of bad hot sauce before, but this is rancid. Now, you may have noticed that I said that this is the last scam connected directly to Maddox, which is why it's time to talk about some of the other people on his, uh, network. First of all, there's Raka Raka Ali. I'm not sure if he's actually part of the network or not because his name doesn't appear anywhere on the site, but he's listed on YouTube as a related channel. Raka is frequently the podcast co-host and essentially the new dick. Much like Dick, he is disdainful of George's SJW opinions, interrupts him, talks over him, laughs in his face, and is one dicking of Maddox's girlfriend away from being excommunicated from the network and joining the Dick show. Because let me be clear, Raka is actually capable of making good content sometimes, and if it ever came down to it, well, Maddox needs Raka, but Raka doesn't really need Maddox. Next there's Jesse Strout, I, I think that's his name more commonly known as Soft Jesse. And this is where things get interesting, because Jesse is a living, breathing, walking, talking liability. He hosts a podcast called Pod Awful and is a carbon copy of Maddox in humor and tone. But unlike Maddox, he at least has a little bit of charisma and doesn't have the voice of a sad 13-year-old. Sadly for him, he has the body and face of a sad 13-year-old. In between the two of them, Jesse and Maddox can be used to create one sad 13-year-old and one haggard 45-year-old man who looks like he just went through a bad divorce. And the similarities are probably not coincidental since Jesse seems to be in utter love with Maddox, spending his free time moderating his subreddit and constantly trying to white knight him and fight his enemies on his behalf in ways that hilariously backfire every time. And this is where we get to the liability part. Jesse had so far been able to get Maddox's sponsors to pull out after calling someone who criticized him a nigger live on air, to which Maddox himself responded by trying and failing to threaten someone who complained to his sponsors and telling him that he'll get his Patreon account shut down for it. Jesse, and let me just say before I continue that I'm not 100% sure on everything I'm about to say next, because it's not clear how many times he's done stuff like this, and it sort of all blends together in the minds of people because no one really cares about Jesse, and apparently he does this stuff a lot. Uh, Jesse also created a fake Patreon account, pretending to be Madcox, and tried to steal money from Dick's fans. Then, in what I think is a separate incident, did it again at least one more time. This time, he actually succeeded in tricking a couple of guys into donating money to the fake account and invited these people who he stole money from onto his show and then tried to dox them live on air. And I'm not sure if I have this right because I've only seen a few seconds of this and I was told that the full video has been removed and I don't care enough to actually check, but I think the guys he stole the money from were... autistic? Like... 
Okay, I only saw a few second clip, but as a connoisseur of online autism, I have a keen eye for this stuff. And seeing a guy in a fedora literally making a re sound and who is stupid enough to fall for this obvious scam. Can't. You just can't. I, I seriously think Jesse robbed a couple of retards. I'm, I'm not even kidding. I think he robbed the retarded. Okay, let's continue. Another Jesse related story is, again, something I can't confirm but saw people talking about online. Okay? Apparently, at one point, Jesse's Patreon was replaced with an account claiming to be collecting money for a stand up comedian called David Ray Martinez, whose children had died. The problem with this is that. Uh, as much as I tried asking Google about it, I found no indication that this man's children have died. And the picture that was used on the account is the first result on Google for black brother and sister. Needless to say, all of these antics, and I'm not fully sure exactly what he did or how many times he did it because, as I said, apparently this happened a lot, all of this got him banned from Patreon completely. And it seems like not even Jesse's own fans are safe from his mental deficiency because another story I heard was that he apparently leaked the nudes of one of his fans after she agreed to get a tattoo live on the show and then changed her mind. So on top of being a serial scammer, he's also a sex offender. Great job. Quality content. Now folks, I'm in no position to take the moral high ground here, okay? I've done a lot of things that are just as bad as Jesse or worse, but I have a little rule that I like to follow when I do this sort of stuff. If you're going to fuck with people, do it because it's funny, not because you're mad. And Jesse is mad. Everything Jesse does to attack Dick and his fans feels like he's doing it through a screen of tears to protect his precious Princess Maddox. Even when he wins, he looks like a loser. Not that you can really call what he does winning, since his only major success in getting revenge on Dick Masterson for dishonoring his beloved Maddox was stealing five bucks from a couple of retards and then getting his Patreon shut down and Maddox's sponsors to drop him, in the process losing them both thousands of dollars. And you would think that after all of this, Maddox would just kick this guy out of his network. But if he did, who would he have left? I mean... It's just him, Jesse, maybe Raka, and uh, wait a minute, no, no, there is someone else, I forgot, there's, there's Game Farts, <laughs> Game Farts, <laughs> Game Farts, <laughs> yeah, I don't really know anything about Game Farts, no, no one knows anything about Game Farts, no one cares about Game Farts. The name Game Farts tells you everything you need to know about Game Farts, okay? I, I, I think these guys joined Maddox during the time he was so desperate for content, he posted on Facebook or Twitter or somewhere that he's accepting submissions from people to join his network, even though people on his own comment section told him that whoever wants to make his own podcast would be better off just making one without him. So I think these guys are just some random nobodies that joined Maddox's site because they thought they could get some exposure through him, and who Maddox took in because his site is just... He has no actual content, okay? He has nothing there. And I don't think he actually even knows these guys. The site acts more like a host for their content than people who are in an actual partnership with him. <laughs> Game farts. Okay, so I've stalled long enough. If you're watching this video near the time I'm uploading it, you probably heard about this and uh, took a renewed interest in Maddox because of it. The lawsuit. A few weeks ago, as of writing this, Dick received a court summon indicating that Maddox is filing a frivolous lawsuit against him and his friends for what people think is $20 million, but what after reading the subpoena, I realized, depending on how you read it, is either by intent or by incompetence, actually anywhere from between a minimum of $66 million and somewhere around $336 million. The lawsuit names several groups of defendants, Dick Madcox, Dick's company he co-founded, Patreon and one of its own public relations people instead of the actual owner, Asterius Kokonos, and the company he works at, this is completely insane. 
and this document is just a mess, okay? At first people thought that this is just a trick to get Patreon to ban Dick and drop the lawsuit, but then you actually read this thing and it's actually serious. And it's amazing, okay? Let's get into this. First of all, the lawyer he hired is using a site made for him by a defunct web designer company using a lazy template and a logo that looks like it was made by someone on Fiverr. Which is ironic seeing as how Maddox wasted 30 grand on his own website when he should have used WordPress and hired a lawyer that uses a site that looks like it was made by WordPress when he should hire an actual web designer. The firm itself is also located in a less than confidence inspired location and in spite of all of this, the person representing Maddox is a 20 year veteran lawyer which begs the question of how he allowed this sort of document to leave his office with his name on it. A document that is so unprofessional that it doesn't even denote the various exhibits and adds them in the middle of the summon rather than as a separate document. This thing is so bad that some people speculate that since George didn't actually have money to pay this guy, he wrote it himself and just paid him to sign it. I mean, this thing is unbelievable. Completely spurious. Bad faith claims as far as the eye can see, okay? In the span of 56 pages, rife with typos, spelling errors and bad punctuation and unprofessional language, whoever wrote this manages to destroy any chance of this thing going to trial with false claims and pure nonsense. The few times whoever wrote this actually uses legal terms, he does it in such a way that legally invalidates his own lawsuit. Not that it could actually go to trial in the first place because it was posted in the wrong jurisdiction. What makes it worse is that due to New York statutes where this was actually filed, some of this isn't even actionable. Even though if it had been filed in LA, which is where everyone lives, which is where it should have been filed, it would have been actionable. The speculation here is that Maddox is suing in New York because it has weaker anti-slap laws. But this thing is is a real treat, okay? L l let's get into this some more, okay? In it, Maddox repeatedly perjures himself on this sworn affidavit, implicates himself in multiple crimes, some of which, like tortious interference and conversion, is exactly what he's suing Dick for, tries to sue Dick for things that he didn't do, things he can't prove, things that aren't crimes, things that his fans did, which he claims Dick told him to do but provides no proof, Maddox also admits to calling Patreon at least 8 times trying to get Dick banned, admits to trying to get him in trouble by pretending to be a journalist and calling both his job and Asterius' job, tells the court that Dick gave his girlfriend PTSD and... God, I, 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 I didn't even really write a script for this, this is so bad, I just, I just want to go off on this. Listen, this lawsuit is, is amazing. Okay, the best part is when Maddox accidentally calls himself retarded. Yeah, I'm not making this up. At one point in this thing he talks about the character Maddox and how the character is meant to be a mentally disabled person. He's not. Maddox was never intended to portray a mentally disabled individual. He's meant to portray Maddox. So not only is Maddox insulting the mentally disabled, He's saying that when he sees someone do an impression of him, what he sees is a retard. J Jessica is also by the way listed as one of the plaintiffs, but she's listed as Jane Doe, probably in an attempt to keep future employers from finding this trash heap of a lawsuit and her involvement in it when googling her name and thereby tanking her already just completely, just completely failed modeling career. Stranger still is that at one point, whoever wrote this thing, I guess got confused and talks about Jane Doe and Metal Jess, as if they're two separate people. An another great bit is when Maddox accuses Kiwi Farms and Encyclopedia Dramatica of libel for saying that his girlfriend has herpes. Now, you see, it's only libel if it isn't true. So I'm just praying to God that this trial goes on long enough for Maddox to have to provide the court with legal proof that his girlfriend doesn't have herpes. That would be absolutely amazing. But what is Maddox even asking for in this lawsuit? Well, 
in his 17 causes of action, okay, he demands $20 million from multiple people, multiple times. He also demands that Dick is fired from the company that he co-founded, that Coconos is fired from his job, that Patreon shuts down the accounts of everyone involved and takes their money back, and if I'm understanding this correctly, he also wants the court to seize and shut down the computers of both companies involved because maybe possibly Dick or Asterios might have used those computers during their trolling of him, which would completely ruin these companies, but even, even putting this in a lawsuit is insane. This guy trolled me and he might have been at work while he was doing it, so court, judge, please take away this company's all of their computers and make these multi-million companies shut down. That's what I'm asking. But the main request here is that the court prevent Dick and his friends from ever talking about Maddox, mentioning him or using his picture ever again. Basically, he's asking the court to tell Dick to stop making fun of him. M maybe he can also ask him to make Dick stand in the naughty corner. How about that? How about that Maddox? I, I should mention that about 80% of my understanding of this lawsuit comes from various YouTubers with legal backgrounds going over it and analyzing it, aside from me just reading it. Of them, those that don't know much about Maddox and Dick say that this is a pretty bad sum and that makes no sense. Those that do know about Dick and Maddox also add that, aside from being a crazy sum that makes no sense, it's also full of false claims that never happened. The only person on YouTube who read this thing and sided with Maddox is fucking Mundane Matt, who has no legal training and, by pure coincidence of course, is another one of the people implicated alongside Maddox in the candid debacle. Good job, Matt. You're, you're a real... Uh, great job. This may seem unrelated, but... Has anyone here ever heard of Zafrank? I'm guessing most of you said no. For those unfamiliar, Zafrank was another early internet superstar from right around the time that Maddox got famous. You know what Zafrank is doing today? He's an adjunct professor at NYU alongside several other prestigious universities and is one of the people running BuzzFeed. Compare that to Maddox, a college dropout who through his own laziness and incompetence, was able to piss away the only good thing he ever had going for him and is now clinging to it 20 years later because he doesn't want to get a job. Maddox, who lives in a duplex with several roommates and sells t-shirts for a living, commemorating the fact that people believe his girlfriend cheats on him. He is literally monetizing his greatest humiliation out of desperation. I can't imagine George's financial situation not being dire, considering how things are going for him. His various sponsors have either left him or turned out to be scams. His YouTube channel, according to Social Blade, is making somewhere between $350 and 20 bucks a month. Probably closer to 20 bucks a month because his latest video was uploaded 6 months ago and just barely reached 20,000 views. I have videos that do better than that and I have like 3,000 subscribers compared to his 300,000. And the top comments on all his videos are just people laughing at him and calling him a cuck. The same is happening on his Dead as a Doornail Twitch streaming channel where people follow him just so that they can change their username so it will pop up on the screen as he's streaming so that they can use it to call him a cuck and laugh at the fact that his sister committed suicide. He also has a second channel called Maddox Animations where he hides his original attack video about Dick as an unlisted video where he has less subscribers than I do despite supposedly being a big YouTube superstar. People also dug around and found out that one of the scam sponsors he had, Candle and Hyde, was only paying him $500 a week which he needs to split with the other people on his show and I doubt other sponsors are paying him much better since his popularity has only sunk since those days. But you don't have to compare Maddox to Zafrank, it's much better if you compare him with Dick. Dick, who has a company he co-founded to fall back on if things go bad and he doesn't really need this podcast. Dick, who's taken all of George's fans' money and the women he loves without even trying. While Maddox is working day and night, resorting to scams to prop up his failing podcast network, 
comprising of himself, some guys with the word fart in their name and a hetero uncaught sexual predator to scrape together as much money as he would be making working part time at a minimum wage job, Dick makes tens of thousands of dollars a month that his fans willingly throw at him for two hours of work a week, during which he created a better podcast network by accident than Maddox was able to on purpose. A network where every single member seems to be making more money on Patreon than Maddox does. While Dick is becoming more popular every day, all of Maddox's statistics have inverted aside from his Twitter where more and more people follow him just to call him names and watch what stupid thing he says next. While Dick has great guests on his show and sounds like he's actually having fun, Maddox is forced to invite people he despises in a desperate attempt to leech off their popularity. In fact, let me go off on a quick little aside here. Chris Raygun, Sargon of Akkad, Blair White, all of these people, okay? All of you skeptic types that go on Maddox's show. You know he hates you, right? I mean, you, you, you gotta know that, right? You know he's one of those people that calls you people racists online? That calls you and all your fans bigots? I mean, I have no problem with sitting down and talking out your differences with someone you disagree with, but that's not what's happening here. What's going on here is a guy inviting people he absolutely hates onto his show and just not bringing it up because he needs their fan base for some ad revenue. This is the same guy who was recently on a video with fucking Destiny crying about internet harassment. I mean, seriously, on the off chance that any of these people watch these videos. Just, just stop it. Stop going on this guy's show. Stop giving him attention. Just, just stop. You, you have nothing to gain from this because he doesn't have a shred of popularity left and he doesn't even like you. He's just taking advantage of you people. If you're the type of person who doesn't like SJWs, don't associate yourself with a guy who defends Antifa and only wants you on his show because he wants your fans money. And if you're a feminist, maybe don't support a guy who still profits off selling a book containing a rape manual who treats his female friends like they're his property. Maybe don't do that. But back to the point, okay? Watching Maddox try to fight Dick has been like watching a Roadrunner cartoon with nothing but clips of Wile E. Coyote setting off his own traps and being crushed by his own rocks. Only in this version, every time the boulder hits him, the Roadrunner also gets a million dollars. In the time since Maddox filed his lawsuit, Dick has gained an additional $6,000 a month on Patreon and continues to be on its list of top 20 earning podcasts. And while I would love to say that the backlash has caused Maddox to lose patrons, it didn't because there's just no one left. In fact, I'm not even sure how Maddox hasn't been banned from Patreon altogether yet, considering they have a no-doxing rule and as I've already shown you, Maddox both threatened to dox someone and his YouTube channel, which his Patreon account purportedly supports, has a video on it where the entire video is dedicated to him doxing a guy. And you know, all of this stuff, everything I've talked about, is probably just the tip of the iceberg. See, I like to really front load my videos. I like to make sure I mention every single thing that I can think about, about one topic, so I only have to make a video about something once. So. What I do is, I go and I look up every single thing I can find about an issue, just skimming it. Then, I go into Autism Overdrive and start over and try to really dig deep, confirm everything and double check to make sure I don't make any mistakes, although I still often do, to just to really see how deep the rabbit hole goes. And usually when I do this, during the second round of research, I tend to find a bunch of stuff that no one noticed or no one talks about. But in this case, just my cursory research on this topic turned up all of this. This, all of this, is just the stuff people talk about. I didn't even go to the Dick Show subreddit or listen to the actual podcast, but if I did, I would probably find enough material for like 5 more hour long videos. And even that will be out of date in a couple of months at the rate Maddox is going, insistently trying to destroy himself and his own reputation. His latest drama before the lawsuit debacle was an appearance on the Amazing Atheist Drunken Peasants podcast, who by the way was also heavily involved in the Candid scandal. A podcast where he demanded in advance that no one will be allowed to ask questions about anything he doesn't like, even if they already paid for it to have their questions show up. Something that caused many of the podcast fans to abandon it and just 
stop supporting it in protest. But the hosts of the podcast weren't actually caught up on all of his personal drama and one question slipped in about whether or not you should care if someone fucks your girlfriend from three years ago. And you can just watch George's face and see he is just about to cry as everyone else on this podcast sits around and laughs at what kind of idiot, what kind of loser would care about something like that. Oh, here's one that came through. TJ, what would you do if Ben banged your ex from three years ago? That's his prerogative. At this, that's yeah. I ain't, I ain't no lay no claim to that no more. Who fucking cares? Don't give a fuck, dude. It's water under the fucking bridge. I mean, I don't understand people who get mad if someone bangs their ex. TJ, what if someone banged your ex from ten years ago? Would you then be mad? Well, yeah, obviously. Slightly, then. slightly less. It's our tenth anniversary. <laughs> I can't know? believe one came through all of a sudden. That's pretty weird. Unaware that that's exactly why Maddox ended his podcast with Dick. Every attack that Maddox has launched at Dick managed to bounce off his chest, causing mild irritation and hitting Maddox square in his own fat face. Dick has taken everything from him without even trying. Maddox only succeeded in getting Dick banned from Twitter and a third-rate comedy club and in the process got him thousands of dollars, Maddox's own fan base and a girlfriend while he himself lost money and turned himself into a joke. And now, after this lawsuit scandal, even his most loyal fans are finally leaving him and his subreddit is in full open revolt against him. 20 years later, Maddox is still here, but no one cares about him anymore. While other online celebs moved on with their lives or segued their internet fame into real life success, Maddox, one of the biggest stars of the early internet, through his own laziness and stupidity, failed to capitalize on the only good thing of value he ever had and transform his popularity into a career, then pissed away his second chance in the form of the biggest problem in the universe out of pure petulance and is now left with nothing. He has no fame, no money, no job. His programming skills are 20 years out of date. He has two decades of unemployment on his resume so he has no chance of getting a job doing anything besides flipping burgers. All he has is a crazy girlfriend, a failing network he must somehow squeeze a living out of for the rest of his life, and a vague memory of a brief moment of fame from 20 years ago that he can look back on and smile. Maddox is still here, but the internet has moved on without him, and the only people who still care about him just want to watch how much further he will fall. So I think the only real way to end this video is with a little classic that the biggest problem in the universe fans might be familiar with. <laughs>